Today on Two Crazy Ketos, we're gonna discuss the top 10 things that you should do before you get started on the keto lifestyle. And we will start this countdown right, right after, after this. this. Hey, what's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, Two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like product reviews, we do recipe videos, we talk about various keto topics, and then once a week, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us on different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we also have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com, and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video you'll be alerted to it yeah so you want to get started on the keto diet but you don't even know where to begin well today we're going to discuss the top 10 things you should do before you get started before that first pat of butter hits your coffee before you eat your first piece of bacon you want to start with this countdown and we got to start with number 10 okay which is clean out your pantry that's a good one you want to get rid of everything that's like super carby all of the things for your from your instead of bc bk before keto life, right? <laughs> so you want to get rid of the rice and the flour. Sugar. Sh well, and all of the versions of sugar, because they have a lot of aliases. It's yep. like agave. Honey. Yeah. What molasses. All of them. You want to get rid of all that stuff. The brown sugar, the syrups. white sugar. No matter how healthy you think it may be, get rid of it. Look on the back of the stuff. If it's got a bunch of carbs, dump it. Now, you can totally donate it if you're like, wow, in good conscience, we've paid like hard-earned money for this stuff and I can't just dump it. You want to donate it to like a local food bank or, you know, a shelter or a church or your neighbors. But honestly, what I would do is throw it away. Right. It reminds me of that Seinfeld episode where they're making like the muffins and they just want the muffin tops. And, and nobody like, else wants the stumps? No, they're like donating the stumps to the homeless. And they're like, we don't want it either. Right, yeah. My opinion is, is like, I don't want to give this stuff to my family members because I think that like carbs are bad for you, that nobody in my family should be eating the sugar and the white bread and the white flour and all that stuff. So why would I give a po what I consider a poison to one of my family members? And I mean, I know it seems like a waste of money, but like I've wasted money on a lot of things like parachute pants right <laughs> yeah i've bought parachute pants so yeah, now the last thing that you want to do is actually eat this stuff yourself like in preparation for not eating carbs anymore no don't go on a binge of like i'm going to eat a ton of carbs because all that's going to do is make getting into ketosis that much harder yeah so don't make your mountain higher yeah. like you've got plenty to do so. yeah don't go and have one of these like oh my gosh i'm going on a diet so i'm going to eat twenty thousand calories today we've been there we've, we've done all that. done that right and the bottom line is what happens you gain a bunch of weight because you're like hey i'm gonna go and lose weight well it's a lot harder to lose that weight that you just put on by having a binge day i remember when i was looking at losing 100 pounds and then that last binge it was like great now i'm looking at losing 110 pounds <laughs> like that doesn't sound better right Yep. So number nine, now that you've cleaned like your entire pantry out, we need to go stock a refrigerator with good, healthy keto options. Things like eggs, cheese, ground beef, cruciferous vegetables, different things that you can eat on the keto diet. Even things like celery if you need something for a snack. Absolutely. And avocado and bacon comes to mind also. Absolutely. And don't try to break the bank stocking grass-fed, grass-finished, everything organic stuff. Like you don't want to triple your grocery bill and right. then be upset at this lifestyle. So just start out simple. Um, I love how Dr. Barry says you can start this diet with hot dogs and mustard. That's you right. don't have to like take out a, you know, loan on your house. Don't remortgage, you know, things in order to start this keto diet. You're going to keep it um, cheap and you're actually going to save on your bill. Right. I mean, it actually took us six months to go from eating like regular 99 cent eggs from Aldi's to buying grass fed, you know, pasture raised, you know, eggs. So you'll tweak your that list happens later. over time as you start realizing I, I'm spending a lot less money bef than I was before on my food bill. Yeah. Now, along with like getting all of your good, clean, healthy keto options, don't go and stock your pantry with stuff like erythritol, no. almond flour. You don't need any of that stuff. As a matter of fact, especially the first month or two, you want to keep this as simple as possible. You don't want to be eating all these keto snacks and things like that. And don't worry, you're not going to need to console yourself because as you shift to being fat fueled, you're going to be full and you're going to enjoy that. Right. Right. That's going to be very different than other diets where you're like, wow, I'm hungry. So it must be working. 
You well, know, you're, yeah. you're going to be full. Well, you know, talking about consoling yourself, that kind of leads to number eight. Yeah, which is go ahead and throw that pity party. Let me get the hat. Like, uh, big pointy hat for the party. Right. Because you're going to look around, especially like as you're getting started and think to yourself like, oh, everybody else is getting to eat all of this stuff, this fun thing, you know, that I want to eat, stuff that I'm used to eating, and and you're going to feel sorry for yourself. Right. So go ahead and have the pity party and get it out of the way um, because guess what? They're experiencing a different health situation than you're about to experience. You're about to be full of energy. You're about to be able to get up and go. You are going to start feeling better and you're going to be losing weight. So maybe that's something that the people around you aren't going to be experiencing. Right. And along with that, be prepared for all of the negative looks, comments, and reactions you're going to get from your friends, your family members, even the cashier at the grocery store. I actually like to have fun with it and come up with different things that I can say back to them when they make stupid remarks to me like, that's a lot of butter. You're going to die from that. And I'm like, I don't know. I've lost like 100 pounds eating two sticks a day. Well, I tell them, oh, I'm not eating it. I'm bathing in it. <laughs> like, I'm greasy all over right now. Like, yeah, I make it weird because it's you're making it weird. That's right. So, yeah, don't worry about it. They're going to say it, but... You know what? You're going to feel good. So I feel like that's the last laugh, right? Yeah. I love having fun with just coming up with something I can say back to them where they don't even know how to respond to. I eat a dozen eggs a day. Yeah, because really, what are they expecting your response to be like? Why are you buying that? Okay, should I go put it back on the shelf? Would that make you happier? Right. Like, you didn't say anything when I had 50 boxes of ho-hos up here. That's absolutely true. So let's talk about number seven. Do your research. Yes. When we first got started on the Keto Lifestyle, there weren't nearly as many resources as there are now. No. You want to get yourself online, go to places like dietdoctor.com, watch like our videos, Dr. Berry's videos, Dr. Berg video, mm -hmm. Keto Connect. There are so many resources out there that will help you along with your Keto Lifestyle. Find out like what's going on with your body. Find out like hey, what is the keto flu? How do I combat it? What are the proper oils to eat? Like, what are all the names for sugars? Yeah, because when we didn't have that information, we were making choices like frying in canola oil because we had thought that that was the healthiest oil. And then we were experiencing like a lot of inflammation and didn't understand why. We didn't understand that maltodextrin was like such a bad thing. Worse for you than sugar itself. And that um, I wasn't going to have to spend a, a ton of extra money. It's just like when I would go into the gas station and buy my 99 cent pork rinds I needed to choose plain versus flavored ones that had maltodextrin in them so just having some research done will make you um, or allow you to to make better educated decisions that's just gonna make you feel good yeah so when you just go through all of those different things you're gonna know exactly what to expect I can't even imagine how much better our progress would have been if I wasn't eating like maltodextrin or if I would have known from the very beginning that like, hey, putting butter and cream in your coffee breaks a fast. Yeah. Right? So I didn't know any of that stuff. So go ahead and get all that research done. And this way you're going to have a much better time as you transition into the keto lifestyle. Yeah, absolutely. Now that leads us to number six. Get yourself some electrolytes and start taking them now. now. Yeah, and not Powerade Zero. Yeah, don't go buy that stuff. Powerade Zero, Gatorade Zero, that stuff is garbage. It's not going to give you really any electrolytes. I mean, it's such a minuscule amount. It's it's worthless. You're I wasting your money. I made this mistake. Yeah. You want to go and get things like Redmond Real Salt, yeah. some Zip Fizzes. Right, the Keto Vitals. Keto Vitals. Ultima. Ultima. You know, you because what you're going to do is you're going to learn when you do your research, from, yeah. you know, number uh, number seven, that one of the things you're going to experience in the first few days is something called the keto flu. Right? Yeah. Well, keep in mind, you are getting off of sugar. Right. You're going to be withdrawing like you were getting off of heroin. Yeah. So in addition to your body being like, hey, I have no carbs. What do I do? It's also going to be Where's my going sugar? through a sugar withdrawal. You better give me my sugar. Give it to me. Yeah. So one of the best ways to combat that is with electrolytes. So if you can get all the electrolytes in your system before you get started and have a stockpile at home, when you start getting those headaches and stuff, like, you know, I tell people, hey, they'll be like, hey, I'm like having cramping or headaches in my first few days. If you pop that, you know, zip fizz into your drink, Within 10, 15 minutes, it's gone. So have that. It's like no different than having you know a bottle of aspirin in your house. Yeah, exactly. That you're, but you're gonna instead of using medication, you're gonna be using good vitamins and minerals in order to combat these things. Yep. So number five, use the kiss method. 
Keep it really simple, at least for the first few weeks. And I know that the KISS method is supposed to be keep it simple, stupid, but we don't talk like that. <laughs> don't talk like that to yourself. We're going to say keep it simple, sweetie. I like that. Yeah, you want to make sure that like you keep everything with your eating very, very simple, especially for the first few weeks. Like stay away from like all of the recipes, even the ones on our website. Yes. You know, don't bother with all the recipes, the cookies, all of the keto snacks, the mug cakes, all of that stuff. You want to keep everything nice and easy, like eggs, bacon, ground beef. Make sure you're making your salads and cruciferous vegetables and stuff. But if you're going to like all of a sudden go through like I'm ravenously hungry, you're much better off going and eating like a half a dozen eggs over turning to like more keto sweets and cookies and stuff like that. Because you're trying to get rid of all that stuff and starting that stuff at the very beginning is just going to continue your sweet tooth that you have. Yeah, you're not trying to replace sugar with erythritol and like have a new vice. Yeah. Like there's amazing new vice. No, you want to stay away from Pinterest too. It's Absolutely. a rabbit hole. Like, yeah. yeah. That can really get you in trouble. There's a lot of hidden carbs in all the recipes. So for the first few weeks, keep it super simple. Yeah. So that leads us to number four, which is find a friend or an online support group that can help be an accountability partner as you begin this keto journey. Yeah, because when I first got started, you know, Rachel started with me, but then she quit after like a month. And I didn't really have anybody that would support me going along. There weren't all of these Facebook groups and everything else where you can go online and get some encouragement when you were like having a bad day. Or ask questions of people that were further along in their keto journey. You know, like sometimes it's just nice to be like, is this normal? Like... If yeah. I pooped properly, like, I don't know, like, what's going on with, you know, the way I feel? How do I combat this headache? You know, all of those things. It's just nice to have somebody to ask yeah. questions just of. just so find either somebody that's in your life that's doing keto and kind of latch on to them or come, like, join our Two Crazy Ketos family group on yeah. Facebook. Or there's a lot of other there's ones out there. There's lots of them. But just get online and find a group of people that can help you encourage that when you feel like you're having a craving, you can get on there and say, like, hey... I had a great day yesterday, but then I fell at night and they can kind of pick you back up and it will really help you get along. Yeah, because if I'm the only voice in my head, it's not good. Yep. So number three, and this is a good one for you. Mm -hmm. Throw out your scale and take measurements and pictures before you get started. I know that this sounds bizarre. You're like, wait a second. I'm actually going to go out and buy a brand new fancy scale no. because I want to weigh myself every day. How in the world am I going to track my progress on this thing? With pictures? and with measurements. So get a tape measure instead of a new scale and get yourself like a good camera so that you can just start pick, taking pictures and measurements every day. Measure your neck, measure your arms, measure your waist. You don't know where this fat's gonna come off of first. So you want to celebrate every single victory, but definitely do not get on the scale. It is not going to track your progress as accurately and as happily as pictures and measurements are gonna I'll be. I'll actually tell you that the scale will impede your progress. It will. It did for Rachel. Because of the scale, Rachel quit and took a six month hiatus. And then you have the reverse thing. So what two things are gonna happen with the scale. Either yeah. A, it's not gonna move, and so you're gonna get discouraged and you're gonna quit. Yes. Or B, it's gonna have a huge jump and you're gonna have a Joe attitude of, I lost 10 pounds, I can have a binge day today because exactly. I've lost 10 pounds. Yes. And either one of those is like a bad result of getting on that scale. And that is why we call the scale the, the devil. devil. Yeah. So I regret actually not taking pictures at the beginning. When I first got started, the first picture you had see of me like actually on keto is three months after I got started. I didn't take those before pictures and I really regret that. And I didn't either. And I totally regret it too. So take a front picture and a sideways picture, get somebody to take a picture of your, your backside, get all that junk in the trunk. Um, we want pictures of it so that you can celebrate every little bit of victory. Cause I'm telling you, you could weigh on Monday and weigh on Friday and cry, but you could take a picture on Monday and take a picture on Friday and look at yourself on Friday and be like, whoa, stuff is happening. Yep. So let's talk about number two. Now this one's going to sound really weird for you guys, but you want to start your keto journey on a Thursday or a Friday, or at least when you know you have a couple of days off. Do not start the keto diet on a Monday. And I know you're going to want to start on like Monday, January 1st, because that's like clean slate land. Right. But but you don't want to do that. Yeah, everybody always wants to like have a binge weekend and start their diet on Monday. You do not want to do We're that not doing on that. the keto journey. Don't do that. Because if you go back to number seven, you're going to learn when you did your research that you're going to go through the keto flu. The first day isn't so bad because your body's kind of cleansing. 
But then all of a sudden your body's going to be like, hey, wait a second, no carbs, no fuel. Uh, I'm starting to make these ketones, but what do I do with them? And you're going to feel like garbage. You're going to be lacking all your electrolytes. And so you don't want to be going through that like on Monday. Yeah, because if you start on Monday, then this is this dynamic is going to start happening in the middle of your work week. And you're going to think to yourself like, oh my goodness, I still have work and responsibilities. Yeah. So I'm going to have to stop this just so that I feel better. Right. So you have a better shot of like rolling with this if the, the worst part of your keto flu symptoms could happen when you have a couple of days off of work. Yeah. So it sounds really weird, but you're going to be much happier. If you just start when you have a couple days off, when you can just do nothing but lay in your bed. Yeah, go to sleep, sleep through it. And also remember number six, which was get your electrolytes because that's going to help you get through that easier. Yeah. Finally, that brings us to number, number one, one, which is just get started. Yeah. I, th- I know that sounds really simple, but you know, you may be making plans at like some season of your life, like after the kids graduate or after school starts. There's or never going to be a good time. N- the planets are not going to line up to like work with you on this. So like, let's just do it. Yeah. It's always going to be somebody's birthday or some holiday or something going on at work. You're just going to have to make the decision. Like it's time to start. I'm starting now. Yeah. A lot of times you just got to grab that window and go. Yeah. Now, I do want to say along with this, like when you are getting started, do not compare yourself to other people who are on the keto journey. Oh, no. In fact, I would say that that is a bonus point. Yes. I would write it down on a piece of paper someplace and stick it on your refrigerator, on your mirror, somewhere where you can see it. I am not going to compare my progress to somebody else because you're just going to get frustrated. Yeah, I see it all the time like in Facebook groups. I even we, It even happened in our life where like Rachel quit the first time because I had results and she didn't have results on the scale. Right. I mean, I was experiencing like shrinking within my clothes, but I wanted to see the same results he was having on the scale. Again, number million reason for not having a scale in your life. Right. But... If I compare myself to somebody else, I'm just going to get discouraged and quit. So remind yourself, put it on the mirror. I am not going to compare myself to anybody else. Yep. Well, that is our video for today. Hopefully we helped you out a little bit with this information. So So leave a comment down below of which one you think is going to impact you the most. And if you've been on the keto diet, let us know down in the comment section which one would have helped you had you thought about it when you got started. Oh yeah, oh my goodness. So if you like what you saw, do us a favor, hit the like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time. Bye. bye. Try this again. This is the longest video ever. It is this going to be so sh- this good. This is going to revolutionize We're 49 lives. minutes into the second video take of that. I know. Woo. And the worst part is it's going to be like a 15-minute video. So there's like two hours of footage to go through. Have fun, Joe. Yeah, yeah.